Anita. So all you have to get to the races this season. What do you think of that stallion? Oh, my dear. Been bad you? much this season. A nice string of fillies. Oh, yes. uh, Mrs. Oh, Jordan. Good to get a ghetto like this. Nice bunch of fellas. Yes, very enjoyable. Well, that's just the last time. Next is one. Fourteen pounder. <laughs> Hello, Morton. Later, I'm in a hurry now. Hmm. Good evening, Mr. Welby. Good evening. It's the middle of the night. A good cigar? On duty, no. Well, then, later. Thank you, sir. Where's Terry? With the body, sir. Where's that? Oh, oh you mean that body, eh? I see. You can take the body. You noted the time? Yes. The same poison and the same method as the murder of Morton at the golf club. I'd be careful the tip of the thing is poisoned. It's simple enough. It's made of rubber and mounted on a poison dart. Can be fired with an air pistol, probably. And without a sound, too. Why this particular thing on the end? Why do they want to have it a spider? Yes. It's not just a spider, it's also a widow. Mm. It's called a widow, that spider. Your help is just what I need. 
Yes, that's why I'm here. To help out. <laughs> uh, would you let me have that projectile, Excuse me. Inspector? Uh, lousy weather. That thing is uh, Black Widow. You know what that is? Do you know? You wouldn't. It's a deadly creature from Central America. A widow, all right, but not a merry one. Sorry, I guess I'm a bit tipsy. Best thing to do in a miserable fog. There isn't any fog. It's <laughs> just the one I'm, I'm afraid, in. Mr. Welby, that... <laughs> Who isn't? Doc, you'll catch cold using my handkerchief. I have to get back to the office, gentlemen. So long now. Sleep well. London Sensation, Morning Edition. The Black Widow claims another victim. London Sensation, Morning Edition. The Black Widow kills once again. Thank you, sir. London Sensation, Morning Edition. The Black Widow claims another murder victim. Oh, Mr. Welby. How's business, Jimmy? Good, sir. Morning edition. The Black Widow claims another murder victim. London sensation. Morning edition. The Black Widow claims another murder victim. London sensation. Morning edition. The Black Widow claims another murder victim. Good morning, Miss Dyke. What's he want? Morning, Miss Dyke. Good morning. What does he want? Who? You know. The Chief's in a terrible mood. Why this time? Because you came in late. Well, someone must report the murder. And about that reporting, Mr. Welby, the Chief's in a terrible mood. Mood, you already told me. Yes, sir, it's that headline. <gasps> Just low-class journalism. Uh, and did you read it? Naturally. That is the point, my dear. You read it and three million Miss Dykes bought copies of the paper, too. That's why I wrote it. Well, he isn't even in. Mr. Osborne had to go to a conference. <sighs> It's the weather. <coughs> the man's a journalist. He does his best for the paper, that's all. So he does his best, so what? The whole darn thing is stupid. Someone ought to crack his skull. He should be discharged. Bah! The publisher of such an important newspaper should have control over the headlines that are used in his paper. Oh, sure, sure. Tomorrow you can take over my job if you believe you can do it better. Take it easy, Osborne. Your position is not the issue. The murders of Morton and Robbins upset us all. Ah, but that scandalous article of Welby's can make trouble for all of us. Especially for you. What are you talking about? Make real trouble, eh? And for this, that swine is getting paid, and with our own cash. With your money, least of all. I suppose you think I committed those murders too, right? Someone has to be the killer. But surely not one of us. Years ago, it was one of us. Don't dig up the past, Selwood. You shared in the money. I'd give my share for my life. Who threatens your honorable life? No one, yet. The way it looks, though, it won't be long. Gentlemen, nice you all could come. Another whiskey, Mr. Salwood? No, I've had enough, thank you. May I open the door to the terrace, William? Certainly, Helen. The fresh air will do us all a lot of good. Please, uh, excuse us, Helen. We're not very good company. The death of Robbins and the murder Yes, of... I understand very well. I've been worrying a little too, you know. But I imagine that... You are men who surely will see that the murderer is found. I have faith. You're so right, Helen. He must be caught, and soon. He might be after any one of us the next time he kills. Any one of us could get a Black Widow warning letter. That's true. But we don't have to do what the letter says. What does that mean? I'm convinced that none of you are prepared really to fight back. I'm not surrounded by a group of heroes here. That's why I'm getting out of England while I'm alive. My solicitor will clear up the details. My dear friends, I leave this love letter for all of you. 
talk or die. But it's German. Why in German? To throw us off the track, I imagine. That Black Widow symbol makes the message clear enough. Goodbye. I don't intend to talk or die if I can avoid it, so I'm leaving. Death through murder. Why, the essential excitement of it appeals to me. Oh, sure. It seems to me, Mr. Wilby, until just this week, neither Morton nor Robbins has ever made any news at all. Ah, amusing. Then you read all the newspapers, eh, Fish? Mr. Wilby, every one issued in the last 30 years I have read and memorized. That's phenomenal. It surely is. Of course, if you don't trust me, the archives are yours. Hmm. No, thanks. Good luck. You should finish reading four million issues around Easter. Mr. Fish, what is this? An official English five pound note. Whose is it? Yours. No, now it's yours. Now, where can I find some information on Morton and Robbins? I'm sorry, Mr. Wilby. Mr. Fish, what is this? Another English five pound note. And who's it? Or I'm not that kind, Mr. Wilby. This is bribery, you know, Mr. Wilby. But for 15 pounds, I'll recite every article that's ever been printed. Go ahead. It seems that on an expedition in Mexico on March 26, 1951, the leader, a famous English scientist named Alphonse Avery, was killed. He died from the bite of a black widow. If you don't know what about... Oh, the black widow is a deadly spider from Central America. You're smarter than your colleagues, Mr. Wilby. Yeah, that's why they dislike me, I suppose. I find it quite the same. Oh, cheers. Oh, sorry. Oh, my. Your health? No, it's for a cold, which you deserve to get. Now, go on. Well, then, the expedition consisted of seven members who became very wealthy right after Professor Avery died. They founded a huge English trust. Which? Mr. Wilby, the story must be told in correct order. So, two of these men were Morton and Robbins. They are dead. Brilliant. I read about that in the morning paper. Matter of fact, I wrote it. To proceed, the names of the others are... Brian, Cartwright, Selwood, Bromfield, and Osborne. Osborne, first name? William. Our Osborne? Your Osborne, Mr. Wilby. <whistles> and the trust they formed is the great English newspaper, The London Sensation, whose chief reporter is, Mr. Wilby, no other than... Me. You are correct. Sounds like fiction to me. Mr. Wilby. At no time is fiction more dreamlike than truth. A moment, please. I knew you would come. Here are the articles. Huh. They were in Mexico, all right. Field. Clarice. Oh. Yes, it's still here. The lady was interested, but didn't want to spend the money. I am sorry. Mm, I'm not. Some things a man just hates to give up, even for money. I feel that way. What good is gold? We leave it all in time. But nobody can do without it. Why not? You can't buy love, peace. Even health isn't for sale. A very good day. A good day, sir. Ah, uh -huh. lovely. What would you like? Ah, uh -huh. St. Anthony. <laughs> Remarkable work. I'd like to speak to Mr. Bromfield, please, Let's Miss. Aha, uh -huh. you're the man I came to find then, sir. I'm a reporter for the London Sensation. Welby is my name, and asking questions is my job. I doubt if I have any answers. But come ahead. Excuse me, please, sir. You have an urgent need for St. Anthony. Well, with a black widow haunting London, one needs a, a patron saint for protection. 
One might need protection at any time, right? Uh, Mr. Bromfield, I found by chance that there just might be a connection between you and the two murder victims. A friendship, you might say. <laughs> That's my job to ask, you must forgive me. Of course. Please, uh, take a seat. You're wrong, Mr. Welby, about a friendship with those people. There was none. I uh, am very sorry, then. Mm. Well, then, I was misinformed. <clears throat> Too bad. Ah, uh, but you knew them, didn't you? What makes you think so? Well, I mean, there was uh, 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 an expedition. Oh, I see. It's that expedition with Avery. In Mexico? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, yes, of course. You're obviously well informed. You must also know that uh, Professor Avery... Died from a black widow's bite. Oh, yes, I know. What is it, Miss Miller? I'm sorry, Mr. Bromfield, a letter from Mexico. Ah. Excuse me? Well, it's Mexico we talked about, and here comes a letter. We talked about, uh, what was it? Hmm. About the Black Widow, sir. It was that expedition of Avery's tragic thing. I lost contact with all the others, and it's really no wonder. The expedition was an utter failure. That's a pity. What is? The whole thing. The expedition a mess. Your friends out of touch. No contact anymore. And suddenly, two are corpses. So sad. Do you recall what kind of fellows those two were? Excuse me, Mr. Welby. It was such a long time ago that it's all quite vague. I can't help you. I can't recall anything, so I ask you to excuse me. I am busy. No, no, you were quite a lot of help. My story's practically written now. Goodbye, Mr. Bromfield. Perhaps we will meet again. So long, Miss Miller. Goodbye. Ah, a reporter has a tough life. <laughs> Did you hear? No. What was there to hear? Uh, it doesn't matter. You should have a, a great deal of real pride, Miss Miller. In what? Your uh, St. Anthony. Are you interested in antiques, then? Oh, sure. I like age in statues and youth in women. Mm. <laughs> oh, don't go and get angry. Oh, I won't. I'm a reporter. I can't help being impolite. Nothing like good whiskey. Shame on you. Before noon, too. I'm not shamed. And I'm not very courageous, so I'm not very good at my job. One sip of this stuff and I'm strong as a lion. Why do you have to be so strong? Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you to go out. You're out of your head. Mm -mm. No, I'm not. You'll see. Oh, I won't ask you right away. I'm not so bad. And you are a lovely girl. Nicer than a statue. Oh, it's a beard that annoys you. No? Well, I'll shave. That might do it. Mr. Welby is out here, sir. Well, send him in. <clears throat> Morning, Osborne. How do you like today's edition? Up 50,000 copies. Mr. Welby, those infernal articles of yours are degrading this newspaper to the level of a sideshow. Exaggerating those two murders. I won't let you make a scandal sheet out of this great newspaper. A widow's paper. A widow's? Hmm. What do you mean? Just a bad sense of humor. Huh? Too young, eh? Uh, for a headline, why do you have to exaggerate a murder story? 
Oh, what do you want me to do? Quote Socrates or the writing of Chaucer? No one wants that. If they can read articles on the atomic bomb, why not the Black Widow? Stop it, I can't stand any more of it. No more, you hear? Well, be you're stubborn. If you... If you refuse to understand my position, then we'll have to part, I'm afraid. Oh, my. Osborne, I'm sorry. <laughs> but if you fire me, uh. I'm quite sure the other newspapers will have work that I'm able to do. Uh. Be seeing you. Uh, Welby. Welby, listen, don't fly off the handle. Uh, you look awful without the beard. No, you're not going to leave us at all, hmm? I must ask you only, please, talk over headlines before they're printed. An ambitious reporter just doesn't understand the political and business aspects of journalism, you see. Of course. I'll be less hasty from now on. <laughs> we are only mortals. Yes. One more thing. I know it's quite a job to collect the information a reporter has to have, but uh, you must use more tact. Yes. I had a complaint about you recently. It came from a Mr. Brumfield. <laughs> it would. <laughs> Good luck. Mm. Let's do it. I'd really regret it. What? If you got your ears burned, Dyke. You'd better be careful that you don't get burned. <laughs> How do you like me without a beard? Wonderful. Mm, well, <sighs> that's what I was afraid of. Well, so long. Coming here, is he? Oh, he might know, huh? He can come. There'll be a reception committee for him. London sensation! London sensation! London sensation! London sensation! How's business, Jimmy? Getting better, Mr. Welby. London sensation! London sensation! Mr. Welby. Oh, sir. You are heading for trouble. You think so? Nice of you to take an interest, sir. Who are you, anyway? Sensation is cheap, Mr. Welby. But sometimes one death leads to many more. Oh, I see. Now I know you're a quiz master on TV. No, I'm talking about the case of Morton and Robbins. Ah, you too. Indeed. But I warn you, leave it to the police. If they can't solve it, well, that's the way it is. Good day, Mr. Welby.
Good morning, Chief. Do you know where I could find Mr. Selwood? Morning, boss. Can you take me to Mr. Selwood, please? Oh, really? Yes, really. Which one of those is Selwood? <coughs> Mr. Selwood? Ooh. Excuse me, gentlemen. Please excuse me. You seem to be having so much fun. But does anyone have change for a shilling, please? <sighs> uh, what coins would you like? Up to you, sir. Whatever you want, I'm at your service. I'll remember that, sir. You didn't think I was generous, did you, sir? No, I just have high hopes, sir. Now, which of you is really Mr. Selwood? None of you? I thought so. Thank you.
Good evening. Sorry to disturb you, but I happen to live here, you see. Oh, it's you. Fish, I'm really surprised at you. A real imposition, Mr. Wilby. I admit it. What the devil were you looking for? On this whole houseboat, not one single drop of whiskey, but knowing you, there has to be liquor somewhere. Oh? You mean that's all you wanted? <laughs> I protect my whiskey very carefully. Up here. Wonderful! I never would have found it. Each house has its personal note. And <laughs> what brings you here in the first place? Fantastic news concerning Avery and Company. Really? Let's hear it. Hmm, please. Why do you live on a boat like this on the waterfront, when in London itself you can find a lot of lovely homes? Mr. Fish, what is the news? Mr. Wilby, you seem to have forgotten my question. Oh, yes, sorry. Well, I inherited this boat, Mr. Fish, and, well, I get awfully seasick. So I turned it into a houseboat. My ancestors were seafaring men. However, I am not quite the man... Could I have another? Oh, sorry. Hmm. I'm not a good host. Mr. Fish, you've had three, uh, three and a half whiskies. You know the story of my life, and now if you don't start talking, you're going to take a forced bath in the Thames River, sir. I'm not afraid of water, Mr. Wilby. Hmm. There's one solution. Money. The London sensation can stand the expense. A pound. Aha! That's much better. <laughs> one is all you get. All right. Professor Avery had a daughter who was a child when he died 20 years ago. Uh, you seem to be in a trance. Oh. Then she certainly isn't a child now. That's logical. And is she living in London now, eh? She is, Mr. Wilby. She is. Her first name is Clarice, but of course she goes under another name than Avery. Yes, she does. Is she a brunette, this girl? I really didn't find out, Mr. Wilby. That's too bad. Anyway, her name is Clarice. Yes. Why? Do you think you know her? How do I look to you, Fish? Huh? Why, you shape. That's right, yes, Mr. Yes. Fish. I'll keep that in mind, of course. Of course. <laughs> do so. So, a fine evening. Now it's up to you to get further information, Mr. Wilby. I must go. Mm -mm. This way. I better go with you. Don't want to lose you. Your information is too useful. No one would dare hurt a servant of Her Majesty. I am safe, you see. Go on, then. God save the Queen and you. Good night, Mr. Wilby. Good night, Mr. Fish. Remarkable shooting. Now, would you please quit it for a while? I'm getting a headache with it. 
I'm not doing it just for fun. That Welby is dangerous, you know. Why don't you fire the fellow? I would just lose all control over him. He's a good journalist, and he'd just go to work elsewhere. Who knows what he would write? I'm worried about the Black Widow. Selwood, or Bromfield, or the daughter of Avery's. Hmm, a woman couldn't do it. And especially not a young woman. Avery's daughter is living in a village somewhere, I imagine, quietly married. Who else could it be? No one has a motive. Selwood? Why would Selwood do it? Don't forget the survivors inherit all our shares. Right now the murderer is helping us, till it's our turn. I don't think it's Selwood. We should find Avery's daughter and talk to her. What? We should get to know the girl, that's all. Hmm. Ah. Why can't you stop it? I'm staying in shape. Might need it. Of Arceus series between Cambridge and Liverpool wound up in a decided victory for Cambridge. Of course, Liverpool this year is out to negate that possibility. The hero for this Liverpool team this year, and a striking one it is, is a gentleman named Simmons, who at the present time has the ball. He's near the goal, he shoots, and it's a score for Liverpool. The crowd goes berserk. Ah. Beautiful score, everyone agrees. The whole crowd is giving him a stand. Mr. Welby, Simmons is I can't give you any information about the Morton Robbins case. We are investigating it. Ready to go at it again anyway. I don't trust you. I don't know why you just look dishonest. No, Mr. Terry, I think you just have a general aversion to newspapers and to working reporters. We reporters are uh, mm, sincere men. We want to write the stories honestly, believe me. Without your help, Mr. Welby. Yes, sir. And I assume you are, Mr. Welby. We at Scotland Yard can do very well indeed. Your articles succeed only in encouraging criminal. Sir John, you shouldn't think of our national press as being against you. Let us work with you. Give us a fair <clears throat> chance to serve Her Majesty. Who won it? Liverpool. Three to two, sir. What? Why, I can't believe it. Mr. Welby. I believe your behavior is reprehensible and there is no excuse for it. Cambridge was defeated. Don't give up hope, sir. Mr. Welby, for our sake and yours too, I must ask you to stay out of this case entirely. I recommend that you leave it up to us to handle. Yes, sir. Goodbye, sir.
Mr. Welby, you have your nerve. Your approach might attract some sort of women, but not me. You let me out or take me right home now, do you hear? Will you say something? Oh, you shaved. Yes, I removed the beard. Miss Miller, uh, Avery, how many names do you have? There are questions that have to be answered. I don't know what questions I could answer. For example, how is Mr. Bryan? Mr. Welby, your table is ready for you this way. There he is. My eyes are good. Whiskies? Yes. You owe me an explanation, Mr. Um. Well, me. What is all this mystery? Your spying, your dubious invitation to this, this dubious nightclub. I want you to hear a German song, Clarice. You'll know it. Thank you. Es gibt eine Frau, die im Dunkel der Stadt Gedanken von Hass und Verderben hat. Sie tötet im Schatten und meidet das Licht und niemand kennt ihr Gesicht. Und schaust nicht zurück, vielleicht träumst du gerade von Liebe und Glück. Da trifft dich ein Schuss, dein Leben verrinnt, ein Schrei verweht im Wind. Und niemand weiß, wie das geschah. Weil keiner mehr lebt, der sie einmal sah. Die schwarze Witwe, wer ist diese Frau? Sie findet ihr Opfer und trifft sehr genau. Warum sind die Straßen so einsam und leer? Warum gehen die Menschen so ängstlich umher? Es gibt eine Frau, die im Dunkel der Stadt einen Pakt mit dem Tode geschlossen hat. Es gibt Recognize eine Frau, I've heard it before. Du the Song of the Black Widow is quite popular. I said I've heard it before, Mr. Welby. This song was popular before the murders began. 
I believe that whoever wrote the threatening notes got the idea for writing them in German from hearing this song. And you've heard it before. Here are the notes I refer to. There. Should be familiar. I'm sorry. But what right do you right? have? I suppose that what you did was right. Do you know Inspector Terry? A man who looks very kind, but isn't at all. And I assure you, the prison beds are very, very uncomfortable. Your passport. I'm sorry. Mr. Welby. Mr. Welby. Yes. Ah, it's you again. Mr. Welby, you lost your wallet. Huh? You're always in so much of a hurry. Thank you. Anyway, I'm glad to see you taking more of an interest in young women than in the Black Widow. But that means that there won't be headline stories in the morning edition describing the murders of Cartwright and Bryan, and that's good. Very good. Goodbye. Goodbye. He got caught, right? Now, Brian, who's next? Our terms will come. The question is when. That's not quite true, Bromfield. One of us will stay alive, but I swear to you, whichever of you is the killer, you won't murder me. Your accusations are childish. For all we know, Selwood, you could be the one. Me? Yes, you. Every shilling you earn, you gamble away. Which one of us is most in need of more money. You or us? Osborne, I warn you. Standing there accusing each other is quite useless. You ignore Avery's daughter. Why not her? William, you must look for that girl. Why, that's nonsense, Helen. I mean, she hasn't any motive. Oh, I think she would have one. Hate. Revenge, if she knows the truth. I think it would be best to inform the police and ask for protection. We can't do it. The police would ask questions, and we all face Dartmoor. The fine choice we have. Murder or Dartmoor. We should give the police the name of Clarice Avery as a suspect. But, Helen, how could we go that far? Accuse someone innocent? Why, I don't know how we could consider such a thing at all. I don't want to die either. But sooner or later, we're going to have to pay for our actions. Ah, so much morality. We must decide. Soon the statute of limitations will cover us. Then all we have to lose is money. And you? Not even that. I don't trust that man. He's either senile or clever as a fox. What if he's right? If money only could get us out. Do what you like. I intend to vanish, but not like Cartwright. The first thing I want is my share of the London sensation. Now? Yes, now I was born. Well, as you wish. Oh. 
The check is only for 450 pounds. 450 pounds and four shillings. Your share. What are you trying to do? You use your share through the years to pay gambling debts. You've drawn almost your whole share in advance. I'm sorry for you. You bandit. You had the use of my share, you thief. For years. Will you pay or not? I paid you. Osborne. I warn you, I'll get my share soon. You'll hear from me. Goodbye, Selwood. That pig. I heard it all. Don't lose your head, Charlie. A sheet of paper. What will we do? We? Oh, yes, we'll go on to Paris, but there's something else we have to do first. How much, Charlie? Does he actually owe you? That's not your affair. Copy that and slip it into Osborne's mail. I've got to go. I'm in a hurry. Charlie! Do you love me? Of course, Evelyn. You know that. Well, I am here. Yes, you're here all right. Miss Avery, you might notice I shaved. Not entirely, but pretty well. And I bought a suit, not new, but acceptable. Even my manners have changed, Miss they Avery. They still could be improved. I wasn't joking, Clarice. You think I was? No, I guess you weren't. Now listen, we must talk seriously about this matter. You're already talking. Mm. Young lady, what you need is discipline. I hope you understand what I mean. Now, you are going to go into that office there, and you will insist that Bromfield give you the rest of the afternoon off. Now, will you? No, sir, I will not. <sighs> Miss Avery, I behaved yesterday like a boor. Ah, but you think I'm just an old drunk anyway. Don't forget, however, that old drunks have good intentions sometimes. So, ah, just water. I don't want you to become the victim of your victims. I understand that you feel your father died not from natural causes, but was murdered. Let us even say that there actually was an Aztec treasure in existence. And that those seven crooks stole it and sold it. That's what they did, all right. <laughs> A moment. That's all well and good. That is, it's true. I don't know if it's so good. If you don't stop playing judge and jury, you'll face a murder charge pretty soon. Now, can't you see that? It's obvious. Those notes of yours are stupid. Each of the dead points to you. Me? They are guilty. Mm. Even if they are, your notes won't do any good. Why don't you leave me alone? You should pay attention to your own business. Clarice! Clarice! Sir, I have your check. Oh, yes, uh, sorry. Uh, a tea and a whiskey and whatever else. Thank you. Clarice, you're acting like a child. Just let me alone. I can't take it anymore. Let me go, please! Please leave us alone. We have to talk it over. Then why don't you go home? She just doesn't want to. You must have children, too. The young lady's no child. Ah, she's a woman. That's worse. Eh? Right? Huh? Ah. If you'll get into my chariot, we'll go somewhere where we can talk. Sensibly. <laughs> Uh. 
Is this speed necessary? Uh-huh. Take a look back there. Well? That fellow behind us. Do you know him? Uh-huh. Met him once before. Who is he? Somebody I'd rather not meet again. Us. Don't drink now, you have to drive. We're safe in front of that policeman. A nice man, eh? Oh. Ah. Uh. <sighs> well, I guess I've earned the nip, eh? Oh! Oh! The uh -oh. flask! It must have opened when I jumped out of the car. Oh, my! Mr. Welby, you drive too fast. It was impossible for me to keep up with you on your little chase. Well, my dear man, Someday, one of these adventures will kill you. Sir, it's a pleasure to see you again. But I have a young lady here who had trouble with the flask. It seems, uh, well, we have to go. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, sir. It's simple extortion. The murderer needs money. It's taking too long. To kill us all, I guess. Maybe she's just getting scared. What makes you say she? It's clearly signed the Black Widow. What makes you think that the Black Widow is a woman? Lawrence is right, Helen. I've no doubt it's a man. A man I know. Selwood. Yes, the extortionist demands the exact amount of his share. Who else but Selwood would ask for that exact figure, and I... This letter makes fine evidence for the police. You must call them in. Yes, William, it's the best thing we can do. I, uh... What if Selwood talks? But you can't go on forever paying money to a criminal for nothing at all. For nothing. For my life, Helen. And as long as I can still buy it, I will do it. What do you mean you're doing your best? You're doing nothing. At least nothing that counts. You offer theories, and we need results. 
Not serious, Terry. Sir John, X-13 advises no action for the time being. He must have a reason. Nothing but excuses, poor excuses. Do you want to wait until several more good citizens are murdered? X-13 is intelligent. Uh, I realize he's one of our finest agents. Uh, uh, frankly, though, his cologne bothers me uh, just a little. X-13 is convinced, sir, and in all honesty, so am I, that all evidence we have points directly to Selwood. Nonsense. Selwood had excellent alibis. In the surroundings in which Mr. Selwood lives, alibis are very easy to come by. Mr. Welby... Don't bring up the name of that mud-slinging reporter around here. He'll really be surprised when I, uh, that is you, arrest and convict his beloved Clarice Avery on quadruple murder charges. Hey, Terry? Miss Avery, I'm not lying to you, I assure you. The police and the friends of the victims both believe you to be the Black Widow. I'm sure that what you tell me is true, Mrs. Osborne. But even at Scotland Yard, I can prove my innocence. The circumstantial evidence is against you. I haven't hurt anyone. My dear, I believe you, but the evidence. It really does look bad. An agreement among the shareholders of the London sensation that the shares of those who die will be inherited by the survivors. Mr. Bromfield's will says that if he's the last surviving member, well, all of it will be yours. Oh, but I had no idea. Who will believe you, living under a false name? And you're more than a secretary to Mr. Bromfield. But I... And even he doesn't know your real name. Uh, may I? Mrs. Osborne, I had reasons for my actions. The police will understand. You're quite young, my child. I wouldn't have interfered at all if... if my husband hadn't gotten a note from the Black Widow. I had nothing to do with the death of your friends. Believe me. I believe you, but that's a little help to you. I think the murderer is a well-known figure of the London underworld. A gambler. A vicious killer. Who wouldn't hesitate to murder even Clarice Avery if she stands in the way of what he wants. Mrs. Osborne, have you come here to predict that I will die too? No. I look out for my own. And I'm worried about my husband. If you need advice, though, call on me. Goodbye. He'll pay? You're sure of it? He'll pay, all right. He has more to lose than I have. When you have the cash, you come right to the club. And if he has me arrested? Make sure you don't get trapped. Get there after he's gone. Can we both go? Ah, you talk too much. I'll be busy visiting the Black Widow. Charlie! Don't worry, Evelyn, I won't kill her. I just want to be quite sure that she stays out of my way. Our plan needs a little protection. When we're gone, she can go on murdering all she wants. But not for a while. Thank <laughs> you. 
Mr. Welby. You know you could be charged with disturbing the peace. That does it. Who are you anyway, you creepy little shadow? Talk or I'll break your neck. You shouldn't treat Scotland Yard this way. Let go. So, from the police, eh? That's even worse. You're supposed to protect citizens from assault by murderous criminals. A bouquet had to save my life. You brought it on yourself, you know. <sighs> don't get philosophical. A reporter has his work. Then don't complain. Even reporters want to live. Butting into police work can be quite dangerous. You shouldn't be so bold, Mr. Welby. I was just doing my job, I tell you. Can't help wondering if Clara Savory was your assailant. Or was meant to be the victim. Miss Savory, my assailant? I can't believe that. I'd have to be mad to believe that. It could be. Lovers of your age act rather strangely. We're both interested in Miss Avery, but for different reasons. Uh, what do you mean, my age? Inspector. Huh? Who are you? What do you want? You'll find out. You can be sure. Get out of here. Get out or I call the police. Will you, Miss Avery? No. You have more to fear from the police than I. Just what do you mean? That the police would be more excited than I about your killing of my friends. Don't make a scene. It would be silly. Isn't it funny, though, I use your name to blackmail Mr. Osborne? I get the cash tonight. What do you want? What do I want? My life. I'm planning a little trip, and I don't want you to kill me before I go. So I'm making a little package of you. First <coughs> time they find you, I'll be on the continent, and I'll be safe. He's harmless. He's a foul lover. Oh. Well, be. Mm. Yes, sir. Oh, 
This is the second bouquet I've tried to bring you today. <laughs> what did he want? Hmm? I just don't know. He thinks that I'm the Black Widow. Oh? Yes, and then he said he had threatened Osborne. Let me see. And that Osborne would pay him money. Tonight, I think he said. Must you go on drinking? No, but I forgot to drink before the fight, so I have to drink afterward. Nice that you... Worry about it. <laughs> Did you say Osborne? Yes. Then we go to Osborne. scare him following too close. I've been waiting for you to say that. Don't you have something to do? Oh, yes. I'll be back, though. What brings you out here? We all work, Miss Dyke, even at night in the woods. Give that package to me. Oh, no, no deal. I'll keep it and you go. Oh, no, no deal. You give it to me and you can go. So sorry, Miss Dyke. Oh! I'm not the gentleman that you are, Welby. Don't lose her now. No chance of that. Goodbye. See you again sometime, I guess. After you, miss. Get in.
What's the problem? Well, uh, a few minutes ago, I parked Miss Avery and my car right over there, and they've both disappeared. Miss Avery is just full of surprises. All right, climb in. Well, aren't we going to look for her? Sure, we'll go straight to the Lost and Found Bureau. <laughs> Mr. Osborne. The Black Widow. What happened to my father, Alphonse Avery, on March 26, 1951? I knew it. You're the... Sit down there. Who was the murderer? Uh, a black widow bite. You know that. It was in all the papers. I'm not asking what the news story said. Who was the killer? Miss Avery... Believe me... Don't move. Just answer me. It was an accident. No. We didn't mean to... No, but... Go on. Don't you dare say a word. Please, sir. Thank you. William? William? Oh, there you are. Claris. Sorry, Mr. Bromfield, but I have to ask you not to make a move. You can help Mr. Osborne answer my questions, though. But, Claris, we should talk together. But do we need that pistol on us? Oh, yes. My name isn't Miller, it's Avery. My father was Professor Alphonse Avery. Clarice, that I have known. You knew? She's a black willow. It might seem that way, but I don't believe it. No, she really is. And you always knew that. You're working with her, that's what. Now it's all clear. Sit down, Mr. Osborne, and lower your voice. What happened to my father? William, tell her. Clarice. Your father. 
father was, was shot. Who? That I don't know. I don't think Osborne knows either. Someone in our group. Then you must know who it was. We never even tried to find out. One of us did it. Just one, not all. Our real crime was, we kept it a secret and stole the treasure of the Aztecs. Dirty dog. Traitor. William. <clears throat> One of us had to confess, and now, let's go to the police. That you won't do. Goodbye. Oh. <laughs> 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 No! 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 But Helen, you... You just couldn't... Yes, I could. Helen! You are... Of course I am. Why did you... Did you do it? Killings. Murders. For money, William. I like it and one never has enough. Yes, but... You have everything here! Yes, now. I'm all mixed up. William, it was for both of us. The girl. She won't go to the police. She wrote the Black Widow letters. Bromfield, not my fault. No, no, no. I had nothing whatever to do with it. The police. I'll go to the police. Oh, no, you won't. I can't stand any more. Murders. And who killed Avery? It's been 15 years. Enough that for 15 years, I've seen it every night. I just can't take it anymore. I'll get it over with. The police. The police. Get away from me! William! She is not at home. And that place of Mr. Bromfield's? No car we can trace. All right, keep the search going. That's right. Instead of sitting around or telephoning, we should do something. What? <laughs> Don't know. All right, then, we'll go to a house and look around, then to Bromfield and to Osborne. Why Osborne? She was last seen at his house. We'll take a squad car. Where does a young girl go when she's frightened, eh? Uh, to see her lover. Don't try anything or I guarantee that I will kill you instantly. Haven't you killed enough yet? Do you plan to murder me as well? That's up to you.
Now sit down. The police know that I'm here. That story won't help you at all. Give me that. All patrols attention. All cars in square mile 49. Expand the search area to cover the harbor. License number of the car we are looking for is KLU 066. Understood, over. Y16, covering Leicester Square. That license is KLU 066, over. Core 9, moving out from Corbin Garden. They protect the citizens, eh? Huh. Can't even drive a car. Oh. Sorry. Be good enough to sign your name to that confession. I'm not going to sign it. I'm not the Black Widow. No. It seems to me you wrote those notes. You committed murder, not I. But in your name. Sign it, quick. No. Then you will die. Good evening, Mr. Wilby. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I I'm in the wrong houseboat, I guess. Good night. Oh. Memories? Yes, indeed. Hmm. Could she be on my yacht? Yes, sure, in your dreams. Let's go to Osborne's. Leave St. Anthony here. He's part of the estate. Of course, I was surprised, but I fought like a wild beast to get away. Now, you get a car over here right away while I keep an eye on them. Now, where's that boat docked? Yacht Harbor. Gangway 15. Yes, Welby. Okay, that's it. Your name? Fish. Yes, like a fish in water. With an F, not a W. I do what I can for the police. All cars to the yacht harbor. Gangway 15, the Welby yacht. Oh, St. Anthony. One woman is threatening another with a pistol. Information was provided by Mr. Fish, who was waiting at the gangplank. Clarice. Yes, but with who? What's the difference? Come on, let's get going. Any order, sir? Well, shut up, you. Ignore that last remark you heard. To the harbor in a hurry. Emergency alert. All squad cars. All right, sign it. It won't do you any good at all. Why not? Do you consider your signature of so little value? All right, let's go. You go out first. Don't try to escape. Over there. Move on. Uh. Oh! Uh. Uh.
is that? There? That's Clarice Avery. I know, the other one. Helen Osborne. That's right. The witch. Don't try to swim. Can you get us a boat? Yes. Three men to the raft. The rest follow me. Yes, sir. You're the police officer. Hold on there. So. Boy, thank you. Oh, boy. You're like a mother, thank you. Awful. Given the chance, she'd have killed all of us. Remember to replace the speaker and heater on the post when you leave the theater. 